Here we are at the start of the travel season, and thank you. I think I'll have the Beaujolais. Thanks. And we've got a great place for you to travel to, and it's right here in Neotropolis. This is not business as usual. Welcome to Neotropolis. We are not business as usual. Hi, I'm your host, Jim Evans. Here on Neotropolis, we like to show and take you to businesses you've maybe not been to. You should enjoy where we're headed this evening. And if you find yourself along the way with us thinking, been there, done that, you'll likely want to be there and do that again. Tonight, we'll take you to a growing family-owned Northeast Ohio destination that is also growing in popularity. You've got your reservation, so relax, maybe with a good glass of wine, and enjoy. Right now, we'll take a look at regional business news from the Neotropolis Good Business News Aggregator. This is the Good Business News along the I-77 corridor for the week of May 30th. Wednesday's Cleveland Plain Dealer Metro section reports that since former Governor Ted Strickland signed the motion picture tax credit last year, more than $29 million in tax credits have been given to 17 Ohio productions, many of them in Northeast Ohio. The films have employed more than 9,000 residents and contributed nearly $120 million to the state's economy. The Ohio Film Office announced that four more films will be shot in Ohio. Auditions for one that is going to be filmed in Tuscarawas County will take place June 26th and June 27th at Kent State University's Performing Arts Center. Sixty Ohioans are expected to be part of the cast and crew. Wednesday's Cleveland Plain Dealer Business section reports that Cleveland-based developers the Wolstein Group and Fairmount Properties have started the first phase of the Flats East Bank project on the Cuyahoga River. Cleveland-based Donnelly's, a contracting firm, poured 1,400 tons of concrete to create one of nine concrete pads that will support the project's structures. The $275 million project will include an office building, hotel, restaurants, and a parking garage that is expected to open in 2013. Thursday's Cleveland Plain Dealer Business section reports that Independence-based DeGeronimo Companies and Indianapolis-based Scannell Properties have a contract to purchase the former Chrysler stamping plant in Twinsburg that was abandoned during Chrysler's 2009 bankruptcy reorganization. The two developers plan to demolish part of the 167-acre stamping complex and construct several new buildings to create a world-class industrial park. Terms of the deal have not been disclosed. Thursday's Cleveland Plain Dealer and Akron Beacon Journal business sections report that Finland-based Seven Signal Limited, a provider of wireless network technology for healthcare providers, is opening its U.S. headquarters in Akron in the city's downtown biomedical corridor. Seven Signal plans to add about 30 jobs within the next two years. This is the good business news along the I-77 corridor for this week. Neotropolis is your source for good business news. If you're keeping score at home, and we know you are, you can do so tonight on balance, tannin, acidity. You can also do that on the road, say at a Canton business that scores big on its uniqueness with those elements for night out, events, and tourism. You get that special sampling in a couple moments. Right now, though, we connect with our content partner, The Business Journal. It's time for the Weekly Buzz. I'm Stacia Ertis with the Business Journal Weekly Buzz for Youngstown and the Mahoning Valley. Youngstown State University and PolyFlow are getting $1.6 million from Ohio's Third Frontier program to help us reduce our dependence on foreign oil. The award will allow PolyFlow, which is a startup company in Akron, to construct a full-scale 2.5 ton per hour demonstration processor that will turn plastic and rubber waste into gasoline and diesel fuel for vehicles. The patented process uses everything from mobile phones to peanut butter jars to tires, transforming them into raw materials for transportation fuels and new plastics. At a news conference at YSU, officials with PolyFlow talked about the process that takes generally non-recyclable items and converts them into liquid fuel. $600,000 of the grant will be used to establish a fuel analysis and testing center at YSU. 
YSU provides us the resources to take this liquid, which is valuable in its own right, but make it utmost value. And that's what we're really looking for for all waste energy technologies, is taking their product and making it valuable in the marketplace. What we've done is create further evidence that YSU is available as a partner to companies and available to support the research needs and their technology needs. YSU President Cynthia Anderson says this is the third project involving the university and the private sector funded by Third Frontier Money, further transforming YSU into an urban research institute. Cruise sales skyrocketed 150 percent in May. General Motors says the Lordstown Bell Cruise had its highest total sales yet with nearly 22,711 deliveries. That helped boost GM's total sales to more than 221,000, a 9 percent increase in retail sales compared to May of 2010. But total sales declined 1 percent on lower fleet volume. Warren Mayor Michael O'Brien, just back from China, says he met with several companies who expressed interest in the area. O'Brien, along with members of the Regional Chamber of Commerce, met with 13 companies over a seven-day mission. O'Brien says they recognize Warren as a strategically important city, with 50 percent of the U.S. population and 40 percent of the Canadian in reach within a business day's drive. One of the cities visited, Daezu, leads China's strong growth in solar energy. And those are this week's headlines. Be sure to check out the Buzz Newscast every business day online at businessjournaldaily.com. I'm Stacia Ertis. We'll see you next week. And now it's time for a Neotropolis fact. Did you know that there are 27 colleges and universities which house more than 20 academic programs in medical education in Northeast Ohio? So you're thinking... I'd really like to have the total wine experience, and maybe more. One great place to have that is the Gervaisi Vineyard and Italian Bistro in Canton. Family owned and operated, it's unique in its tradition, location, and its various offerings for families, diners, tourists, and of course, wine enthusiasts. Jennifer Boris was fortunate to reserve some time there and now shows us how it's so special. Tuscany is thousands of miles away, but here at Gervasi Vineyard in Canton, guests can experience La Dolce Vita, the sweet life of Italy, and the facility is definitely not doing business as usual. Well, it, it's really a destination. Uh, when we set out to uh, develop this property, uh, we wanted more than just a winery, more than just a bistro. We wanted a place where people came and they stayed for a long time. And Grandma Gervasi, Ted's mother, would be proud. She is the namesake and also the inspiration. Gervasi is my mother's maiden name. Uh, my mother was born in Italy, uh, came to the United States at a very early age, and uh, was an excellent cook. Uh, there were 10 children. I was one of 10, so uh, my mother cooked all the time. So it seemed very appropriate if you're going to start a restaurant that, that you honor her uh, not only for her cooking expertise but also her heritage. Ted Swaldo is the owner of Gervasi, and he took a detour before deciding to create the vineyard. I retired. I owned a company that was an automotive manufacturer here in town for 35 years and I retired from the business. Uh, I w did the Florida thing. I went to Florida for uh, about 40 days and I said this isn't me. I got bored. So he came back to Canton and started working on the property he had bought two months before retiring. This is what the barn looked like in the beginning. And the lady who owned it, it had been in her family for quite a while. Uh, I had promised her that I would not turn it into a housing development. This is the last farm in the city of Canton. We're actually in the, cor in the uh, corporation. And so uh, I started thinking about it, and I said, well, now if I'm not going to farm it, you know, what am I going to do with it? And it just seemed natural to turn it into a winery. He started working on the property in March of 2009 and opened it about nine months later, retaining agriculture status, so it truly is a farm, with a vineyard and other open fields that will be farmed with other crops in the future. Ted also decided to get his family involved. I have a son-in-law that works here. Uh, I also have my wife and my daughter. We have what we call the marketplace, which is next door, which we sell uh, foodstuffs. We sell imported uh, you know, items. Uh, beautiful place. And my wife and my daughter are very actively involved. Uh, grandsons work here in the summertime as parking attendants. And so we try to keep the whole family involved. That's partly why I did this. You know, I could have invested my money in just, you know, stocks and bonds, 
but I wanted to invest in something that's enduring, and, and my goal is to see this go on for generations. His son, Scott Swaldo, is the general manager of the property that, as Ted mentioned, includes the marketplace and bistro, but also the winery and a large outdoor patio beside a lake. Well, this is our piazza. We, um, it's all brick covered. We have seating for about 160 people here. We've got uh, vintage ga gas lamps that line the, the um, piazza as well as the pathways that lead out to pavilion. And a pavilion for outdoor weddings. I think that we, we, we suspected people might want to get married here, but we never expected the level of interest. It's been really amazing. And what we're finding is that uh, people really are looking for a unique place to have uh, a destination type wedding or an outdoor wedding and we're the perfect venue for that. So we have in the outdoor pavilion this summer over 50 weddings, um, Friday, Saturday, Sundays, most, most weekends during the warm weather months and even some weeknights that, that's so popular. The bistro is also very popular with a limited menu that changes by the season using the freshest local ingredients as much as possible. First of all, we have a brick-fired oven, so brick-fired Italian-style pizzas, you know, real thin crust are really one of our, you know, bread-and-butter type dishes. Um, one of our featured entrees that everyone loves that's always on the menu is our Tuscan beef short ribs. They're absolutely amazing. They're, they're, we actually took them off the menu one season, and we learned quickly that was a mistake, and now they're on for good. Scott says they support local businesses by buying produce from farmers and trying to create a local war movement from the vineyard suppliers to the furniture builders. We really wanted to embrace, you know, Italian architecture and, and the feel like you're in Tuscany, you escaped somewhere special like that. So uh, inside the bistro here, being that it's a rustic, you know, barn that we restored, we really went with the Tuscan farmhouse kind of feel, put in the large stone fireplace that's right behind me. Um, that was in addition to the, the barn. Of course, it didn't have one originally. Well, what the barn does have is a lot of history. The interesting thing about the barn that built in 1823 was the wood, the beams and everything you see here. Uh, there was a sawmill on this property. Which means the wood used in building the barn was grown and cut on the property, and it's still part of the building today. We're excited about it because we really tried to salvage as much as we can, and we, we estimated about 95 percent. Uh, the main table that sits in front of the uh, big window there um, is uh, the floor. Uh, the bar, the tasting bar, was made of, of timbers that we recycled. And so we're pretty excited about able to do that. We did that with the farmhouse, too. Um, this is what we call our balconada, and it is basically the time word for balcony. It's our loft that we have uh, put into the, into the bistro, the original barn. And people can come up here and enjoy appetizers and wine, and uh, they're waiting for a table or just, you know, they just want to hang out here and enjoy it. It's also where guests can learn about an even more surprising element of history tied to the barn. There was a murder here. Uh, actually murders here back in the 20s uh, where uh, some people broke out of the Stark County Jail and they, they holed up in the basement of this building, or not called the basement, lower level, and the, the uh, sheriff had a shootout and, and a couple of people were killed here. All that's on display. We have uh, a, a balcony area in our, our bistro that uh, has it on the wall and you can read all about the, the history. It's pretty exciting. Everyone at Gervasi is also excited about the village they are building on the other side of the lake. A total of seven buildings, six cottages will have housing and one will be the Grand Villa used as a conference center and for meetings. Each of the cottages have uh, a, a, an open area there. We're going to use that uh, old world uh, southern Italy kind of feel with uh, heated floors and they're going to be stone. We're going to have a, a fireplace in every room and vaulted wood ceilings and old world be you know, bedding and decor. So we're excited about that. Uh, it's going to be a great place to spend a day or to do a, you know, a, a corporate retreat, anything like that. We're excited. That's, that's going to be fun. The village will also include a hands-on culinary school and a wine school to learn pairings. This is our Primitiva. This is our Javazi Select brand. and. Primitivo is an old vine Zinfandel. This is a beautiful wine. It's um, actually been aged in oak for three years. And wine is, of course, a major part of what they do. And our wines are, have been very well received. In fact, we sold every bottle we made last year. So we're pretty excited about it. That's almost 45,000 bottles sold only on the property. It's a good blend between uh, reds and whites, uh, sweet and dry. Uh, you know, it's, it's interesting about that. When we did our studies, the Ohio Wine Association gave us a lot of data on what kind of wines were sold. Uh, obviously, they were saying that 60% of wines sold in Ohio are sweet wines. 
uh, but we felt that our clientele was going to be a little different, and we're, we're actually 60% or more dry wine. Business is already good for Gervasi, with 125,000 people coming through in the first 10 months. But after the new village is constructed, they believe even more people will visit. The Hall of Fame, which is the number one tourist attraction, we want to be number two. Um, they uh, had 185,000, so we did pretty good. And I'd say that 30 to 35 percent of those people live more than 50 miles. Uh, that's even true with our weddings. We've been very successful with hosting weddings. Uh, probably 25 to 30 percent of those are, again, people that don't live in the area. So it's been really good for the economy. Uh, it brings in new money. Uh, and hopefully when the people are here, they'll, they'll go shopping, they'll go to the Hall of Fame, they'll go you know, buy fuel, whatever it is, it, it definitely helps the economy. Last year they hired 85 to 90 people, and with the new addition, they'll be pushing 130 to 140, not to mention the hundreds of people working on the construction of the new village. Well, it's a really exciting piece of our tourism puzzle here in Stark County. I mean, this is one of the nicest attractions that we've had added to our mix of inventory in a long time. Not only did they build it, they built it right. They spared no expense. They made something that I would put up against any winery anywhere in the world. John Keist is the executive director of the Canton Stark County Convention and Visitors Bureau. And he says Gervasi plays a big role in boosting the local economy through tourism. Well, we definitely have lost some manufacturing in this area and throughout northeastern Ohio, and we're becoming a more service-oriented economy. But we haven't lost jobs in tourism. We've been growing jobs in tourism, and over 12,000 people in this county are directly or indirectly involved in working with tourism. He says tourism in Ohio is about a $30 billion industry, and about 2.5 million people come to the Canton-Stark County area each year. Oh, there's some beautiful wineries here. Down by Brewster, between Brewster and Navarre, there's perennial vineyards. And up um, right off, right outside of Hartville, there's a beautiful Maze Valley winery, which also has a wonderful farm and corn mazes in the autumn and beautiful things to do and see all year round. But they've got a fantastic winery as well. Now, Gervasi Vineyard is a major addition to that list, luring guests to the beautiful property, fresh food, and unique wine, and also giving the Gervasi family a legacy to be proud of. It's really super exciting. It's, it's fun because it used to be uh, I'd come home from the, the business of water pumps, making automotive water pumps, and it, my wife and kids weren't too excited about that. But now when we have uh, family dinners, it's like you know, we're all talking about the same thing. And I, I just hope that we inspire my, my grandkids and great-grandkids to carry it on. The village is scheduled to open by October or November, but you can make your reservation by mid to late summer. In Canton, I'm Jennifer Boris for Western Reserve PBS. I'm pretty sure that a trip to the Gervasi Vineyard is in my future. And with that, it's time now for Into the Future. Into the future. Hi, I'm Jennifer Parker. I'm the president of Parker Public Relations. We're a national and international PR services agency focused in the sustainable building and advanced energy industries. We've been around since 2007 where we were originally established in western New York and brought the company here to the Northeast Ohio region very recently and we're ple pleasantly surprised to find so many like-minded companies um, in the area. We found a lot of support with what we're trying to do in telling the building a better tomorrow stories for technology developers and product manufacturers in the sustainable building and advanced energy fields. Um, we are currently located at the Akron Global Business Development Incubator, which is a fantastic opportunity for us because there are a number of companies uh, there that are creating um, advanced energy technologies as well as other technologies that we are hoping to help spread the word about here in Northeast Ohio as well as across the country and around the world. Our clients do span the entire United States, Canada, and some nationally, including in the uh, technology hotbeds of Germany where a lot of advanced energy technologies are coming from. So it's really exciting to help the Northeast Ohio region, and specifically Akron, bring some of those companies uh, here to work in the United States. Uh, if you'd like more information on the kinds of PR services that we offer, please visit our website at www.parker-pr.com. Visit us on Facebook, 
or Twitter, or you can email me directly, Jennifer Parker at jparker at parker-pr.com. Thanks so much. You know, we like to give you the rundown on the financial field, and the experts at NCA Financial Planners are here now to do that with a stock wrap. This week's local company spotlight is Applied Industrial Technologies. Headquartered in Cleveland since its founding in 1923, the company distributes maintenance repair operation products to industrial markets. Bearings, rubber products, fluid power systems, and specialty items make up most of the company's $1.9 billion annual sales. The Applied Network is comprised of approximately 470 facilities, 4,600 employees, seven strategic distribution centers, and more than 40 specialty repair and rebuild shops. This ensures that the products and support their buyers need are always close by. With more than 4 million line items available from 2,000 world-class manufacturers, Applied works in close collaboration with their customers to understand their needs and processes. Applied also works to understand the needs of their employees. The company has been recognized for their work environment, being named the North Coast 99 Award winner again for 2010. This is the 10th time the company has received the annual award that honors 99 great workplaces for top talent in Northeast Ohio. Applied Industrial Technologies trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol AIT. Back to you, Jim. Thanks. Certainly, there's so much more to take in when it comes to culture and entertainment in Northeast Ohio. And you know, we have just a guy who serves it up like no other. He's Cool Cleveland's Thomas Mulready, and he joins us now to tell you about some other events that are going on in Neotropolis this weekend. What we're talking about is the business of fun. Hey, it's Thomas Mulready from CoolCleveland.com, and this week, we want to suggest that you shop local rather than at the big box stores. A couple of good reasons for this, especially with this economy and gas prices the way they are. It pays to check in your local neighborhood. There's often better shopping. It's closer by. You're going to save money, and you're going to keep your dollars in the community. We found that over 70 cents of every dollar stays in the community when you shop local. There's some great little shopping districts throughout northeast Ohio. For example, in Kinsman, which is near Youngstown. There's a place called Market Square. They've got 12 shops, over 50,000 used books. Uh, there's Amish jams and jellies, great little place just outside of Youngstown. In Akron, the North Side District is a great place for gifts and for art. There's the Millworks Gallery, the Magoon uh, Pewter, uh, Red Light Galleries. There's the Zeber Martell Clay Studio and Gallery. All throughout that north side district, great place for gifts and crafts. In Berea, uh, which is a college town, it's right by Baldwin Wallace, uh, there's some great little shops. Dick's Bakery is delicious baked goods, uh, naturally gifts. Um, Whitey's Army Navy Store, one of the few Army Navy stores still available. Of course, in a college town, that makes sense. And the shop in Berea, which has been there for years, great little gift shop. And in Lakewood, right where we are here, of course, behind me here, Lion and Blue is great for gifts and jewelry. Uh, the Root Cafe is here, the Exchange. Uh, local Girl Gallery. Sweet Designs is wonderful for local chocolate and candies. So shop local. Think outside the big box in Northeast Ohio. This is Thomas Mulready from CoolCleveland.com. Have a great week in Neotropolis. Keep in mind, there are things that you could do to help the Northeast Ohio economy. One way is to get out to any of the events Thomas told us about and make your investment in fun. You can also position yourself out there and make your brilliant comments about the Northeast Ohio economy to the people at the table next to you and tell them to spread the word. And of course, log on to our website, neotropolis.org, and tell us what you think. I'm Jim Evans. We'll see you next week on Neotropolis, not business as usual. Funding for Neotropolis has been provided by the Burton D. Morgan Foundation, committed to the free enterprise system. First Place Bank is proud to sponsor Neotropolis.
As a community bank, First Place Bank believes we are only as strong as the communities we serve. Locally owned businesses are the cornerstone of our communities. We concentrate on helping local businesses make the most of their resources through a variety of services delivered with a community banking touch. The Dominion Foundation. Jumpstart. Working with entrepreneurs to accelerate the growth of their high potential businesses to create a more prosperous economic future for Northeast Ohio. Youngstown Business Incubator. And Nortec. Next week on Neotropolis, more buzz, stock wrap, and into the future. Find out who is not doing business as usual. Now stay tuned for Newsnight.